Okay, before we get into our actual video, uh, we wanted to apologize for the mess of a video we put out last night. We had lots of technical difficulties and still are. This is like the third time I've done this little intro because our computer keeps stopping and wanting to update and um, abruptly stopping for no reason. Um, so I've restarted, rebooted the computer. Uh, hopefully this is the last time I have to do this and I can finally edit our video. Uh, we added some uh, a program to compress the files, our video files, uh, so that when we go to upload to YouTube when we get longer videos, it doesn't take hours upon hours and uh, use up our hotspot on our cell phones or just sit idle and waste time basically. Uh, hopefully this really speeds things up. It did last night but then we had all the issues of apparently during editing I put one scene in the first uh, scene like three or four times. I didn't catch it. Like I said we were having all these problems with the computer and we, act, we uh, ran out of space uh, on the hard drive uh, there was like zero memory left uh, so it was taking forever to upload and process everything and but I think we've, we've gotten that taken care of I've been up since uh, about 530 uh, trying to re-edit and do this over and over and hopefully this is the last time all right Let's get into episode one of the basement grow room. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back, Skidmore family farm friends. We are in the midst of cleaning out the basement. Um, I had mentioned yesterday uh, about starting a grow room for uh, vegetables and, and just for our uh, spring and summer starts for greens that type of thing um, we're gonna go full steam ahead this year and try to make everything uh, that we've talked about in the past come true so let's uh, go downstairs in the basement and you can see what I've started and what, what the tasks are in hand to get this job completed and get the show on the road with the greens and vegetables and uh, all the summer starts for our vegetable garden. Okay, let's head down the stairs. Here's at the top of the stairs we've got some extra chairs, card table, my paint sprayer for my remodel projects. Uh, these stairs are pretty steep. This basement is just a uh, utility room, essentially. It's got our water heater, washer dryer, and that type of thing down here, but it's all concrete. Let me turn this off real quick. Sorry, I should have did that before I started the video, but oh well. Let's keep going. Sorry about the finger. Um, this is our old water heater. It's currently leaking as you can see. That's one of the things I need to get fixed. Um, anytime you use the hot water excessively it starts to drip out the thing. Uh, I'm just, I've already got a new water heater in place. It's just a matter of hooking it up. Um, I got that situated just a while back and got our new washer and dryer in place. But as you can see, let me scoot back, all of this uh, stuff here on the shelves, or shelf, this is a concrete uh, block, and then these, uh, this shelf area here is like a concrete cap um, that was added in the 70s when my house was originally remodeled, the, the original house. But... Uh, being all concrete 
uh, in the past I've sealed the floor. We won't have to worry about mold or mildew, hopefully down here if I do a grow room type thing. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people say, well, it's going to be humid and all that. Well, that's what this is for right here. Um, normally, yeah, in your basement, you would, uh, wouldn't want to just start up a grow room because of the humidity levels, but that is a dehumidifier. Um, we've got plastic up here that I'm going to close um, the stairwell off with so we don't have humidity just like pouring into the um, upstairs rooms. But I think this will make a nice little uh, grow room. We are planning on moving, so to start uh, a greenhouse and or, or make like one out of windows, I mean, I could easily do that, but um, then I have to go look for windows or pay for them. My, my basement's already here is what I'm getting at. Um, these shelves will work out ideally i think i mean that that's a five gallon bucket of drywall mud and there you can see uh i mean if you've seen a five gallon bucket you can see how much space is still left there's that's about 30 inches uh from this edge of the wall the lower half uh to the wall up here so we can put flats the plastic uh, like starter flats uh up there and we've already got electrical outlets. Um, I have a heater for down here if it's too cold, which it stays at about a constant 50, between 50, 55 degrees, depending on how cold it gets outside. Um, but I think once I get all this stuff cleaned out, I'm in the, I've already taken from here where you see the bare spots around, I've taken cabinets up. Um, that are going to be a part of the new house uh, or if we get a house, uh, property that has a house um, they could go in the garage or used to be used to remodel the kitchen that type of thing that's uh, a working dishwasher a microwave uh, two working window air conditioners we've uh, trying to get prepared for this we we don't i mean you can never be too prepared but are never prepared enough either <laughs> as far as i'm concerned when when moving or building a new house and that type of thing the plan is to go off grid so i know a lot of these appliances might not work right off the bat but um we might it might be a type of deal to where we are on grid at first like we are now um and convert to an off-grid homestead slash farm. Um, I know there's like there's a difference between homesteading and farming. Typically, homestead is to produce uh, goods, food um, between vegetables, meats, um, things that you use in daily life, uh, just for the homestead. Um, and then a farm to me is um, a business more more or less uh, growing products that you can sell and use yourself too it's not that you can't you can't use these products that you uh, grow or um, produce whatever whatever it is uh, cows goats chickens corn, radishes, whatever it is that you're um, uh, producing on your homestead slash farm. Um, but it will, we're basically in the beginning of all this, so uh, I'm just trying to document everything. Um, I like the whole YouTube homesteading farming idea. All the uh, producers of channels uh it's it's just really surprised me i'm kind of amazed at, at the whole world that's out there in, in the youtube world i guess um and what they have to provide for everybody i mean it's just free information out out there waiting for people to use it you can go to a channel that has 
20 subscribers and find lots of useful information uh, or go to a channel that has a half a million subscribers and still find useful information for homesteading or whatever it is you're interested in. Um, but this is the start of our greenhouse grow room, whatever you want to call it, in our basement. Uh, I have I bought 20 flats yesterday. Uh, they're the just a, a regular flat, non-perforated. There's no dividers in them. Um, that will most likely get used for my fodder that I'm going to grow for the animals. Uh, and then I'll get some of the uh, like starter flats that have the little um, individual. I don't know what you'd call them, little cubes or spots. I don't, I don't know how they label that or whatever, but um, we'll just uh, get back with you here in a little bit once we get it cleaned out and go from there. Uh, I've, I've priced lights and seeds and all that type of thing, so it's just a matter of this getting this first stage done, getting some lights in here. And I mean, we've got lights, but we're gonna get, I'm gonna get some LED, like four footer, 2200 lumen lights, I think, or 1600 lumens, um, hanging lights that we'll be able to adjust over the trays. And once we get that going, it'll be up and up and running. So stay tuned. Have a great day. Thanks for watching Skidmore Family Farm. I have taken uh, all the tools, trash, materials, everything out of the basement. Like I showed you earlier, it was completely full on the shelf. But now we have emptied, for the most part, everything out that I wanted to get out this evening. <laughs> but I did make a mess upstairs. I moved everything into the living room where I uh, first started the video at. Uh, let's turn this around a little bit. We're getting some glare, but um, yeah, I cleaned the, the basement out, and you can see behind me, uh, right over there, we have the flats for the flowers and uh, vegetable starts and everything we're going to try and grow this year. We're trying to get it going. Um, we shall see uh, how this goes, I guess. We have uh, all these flats. I have 20 of them so far that I've purchased. And as you can see, it's, like I said, it's just gonna go around the perimeter of the room. And uh, we'll get things going. Hopefully, maybe we can even make a little money at it. The plan really for me was, was to um, get, some vegetables, uh, that type of thing, fruits, berries, anything like that we eat, uh, at least try it this year and see, and see how things go. But um, I know like spinach and greens and just all those types of things, radishes, uh, baby carrots, all those things can be sold, or any vegetable for that matter can be sold at the farmer's market. Well, um, we're gonna try to sell starts at the farmer's market since we don't have uh, a huge yard and the, the lighting and soil and everything's very poor. It's, it's like the worst setup you could probably ask for in a yard, the way the tree, huge trees block the sun and the, the best spot in the, on our lot would be the front yard uh, and most of it doesn't even get full sun until after two or three o'clock because the the positioning of the uh, house from it comes up um, from the behind the house the sun when it rises and we have huge trees in the neighbor's yards there's a huge barn next to the house I have a privacy fence that blocks everything up close. Well, by the time it gets past my house, 
over the house into the middle of the day. I mean, it's one or two o'clock before the whole front yard has sun on it, which I know not everything needs direct sun, um, but the soil is just rocky and, and we're moving. We're, the goal is to, is to buy more property ultimately. So going through all that trouble at this point isn't really, isn't really worth it, but just to get our name out there and uh, learn how to do all this, I think it's going to be a good uh, learning experience at the very least. So when we do have property, um, we get a greenhouse, those types of uh, structures and uh, infrastructure on our farm, we will know where we stand as far as uh, what we need to do, um, all the things involved, the different materials. Um, I'm still doing research on seeds. I know a lot of people that grow greens for like market gardening uh, grow or buy, sorry, they, they buy seeds in bulk. You can buy them in uh, 20 pound bags or, or whatever that uh, particular seed comes in, but instead of buying little uh, seed packets with 20 seeds or 50 seeds in them, you can buy them by the pound uh, in bulk rate. And if we grow greens, that I, I'm I'm uh, trying to come up with something that I can sell as a product uh, year round, uh, and it provides a good service. Um, my thoughts are uh, a multi green. Uh, like arrangement in, in a, a pot of some sort, maybe like a decorative pot or nothing fancy, but something with some color on it. And um, that you could have your own little uh, mixed greens uh, salad mix, basically growing in front of your, one of your windows or a, a patio door or something like that, or on your uh, back porch, even if you have an apartment. Uh, you got a little patio or um, something like that um, that would be good for anybody. I mean, if you go to the store and look at greens, uh, your salads, they're five bucks for 12 ounces of salad or whatever. I mean, it's not cheap. And, and if you find it on sale, most of it's ready to expire. And if you look at it, it's brown and uh, kind of slimy looking a lot of times. And if it's organic, and it's really good quality, you're going to pay high dollar for it. I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with uh, some product ideas um, just to go along to pick up the expenses. Uh, maybe I would be happy if we broke even and got some of our own salad greens and carrots and uh, different veggies or fruits or whatever. Um, or even if it paid for half of it, I'm good with that. I mean, like I said, this the the biggest thing for us right now is the learning experience that we're creating and teaching our kids um, the value of a dollar. Uh, a dollar doesn't go very far. Uh, you buy seeds for a dollar though, you can grow twenty dollars worth of vegetables. Um, and if you have a greenhouse where you're getting natural light and don't have to supplement the light like we are down here, you're going to have even less money. Sorry, we had a little glitch there. I uh, had a message come through and my video shut off. But uh, what I was getting at was just uh, teaching our kids is the biggest thing right now for me. I want to learn all this too, but kids, schools, they, they learn nothing about farming or uh, fruits and vegetables that you get at the store. There's... I don't even think a lot of schools even offer home ec anymore, shop classes. There, there's nothing uh, of real substance and value anymore. Though. They're, they're trying to rewrite history and, and erase stuff. Uh, I, just, I, I don't get it. Um, we're just trying to do what we think's best for our kids and create a... Um, uh, a good living situation to where you're getting two educations. They can go to school for their normal time every day and 
come home and learn about real life stuff. Um, all these people going to school for endless years and still can't get a job or I mean what what good is that not not this I'm not dogging school by any means but um, I think there's lots of things that we can teach our kids and this the schools should be teaching the kids that they're they're just they're lacking and I know funds are, aren't uh, probably what they should be and teachers don't get paid a lot uh, but these little experiments that we're doing right here in our basements is something they could do it on a very small scale. They could take one of these flats and plant tomatoes or uh, anything, the, uh, any peppers, uh, all the stuff. We live in Indiana, so all those things are uh, plants that grow very well indoors or outdoors. And... and teaching these kids uh, even in elementary school I, I think they should already be learning it at, at kindergarten all the way up and uh, uh, infinity <laughs> I mean you just uh, people have no clue anymore it seems like about any of this stuff and um, I know I'm just rambling but it, it just kind of irks me uh, having small children and um, we're fortunate enough that they have a lot of extra activities and plays and, and things that stimulate the kids and get them, keep them busy and out of trouble. But most of the schools aren't like that. Um, very few have the activities that we have. And, and I know a lot of it's just the parenting skills too. I mean, school doesn't necessarily define the child, but uh, I think a lot of it's poor parenting these days, but, well, that's enough rambling. We'll, uh, get going on some more, um, more ideas and get this thing in progress. Uh, this is just the beginning stages. I hope you enjoy the content that we're trying to create and what we're trying to do uh, to better our lives and our children's lives.